Hi, Winry and Alphaeus. Guess who? It's Nanny Susanny. Look, I got my hair cut. Finally, after three months, I was due. I know, sweetheart, I don't have my broom hair anymore, but it'll come back. It's flat now, but tomorrow morning I'll wake up and it'll bounce back and I'll have my broom hair in no time. Don't worry about it, but I feel so light. It feels wonderful. So tonight we're going to do desert animals and tonight it's desert hunters. Look at this. So interesting stuff. So let's start. It says, although some animals manage to survive on desert plants and seeds. Many live by hunting and eating other animals. There are several species of cats in the desert, as well as foxes, hyenas, and hunting birds. Most of these hunters can run or fly swiftly and have sharp teeth or claws for killing prey. So the first one here is this big vulture. It's called the lapet-faced vulture. And like all vultures, it's a scavenger. You're going to find out what that is. It means it searches for dead animals to eat or finish off prey that other hunters have killed. Look how big he is. So, they never hunt for their own food. Never. Ever. They eat the leftovers like they're scavengers. And after they eat all the dead animals that somebody else left behind, then they always go to the water hole and they splash and clean their really messy face. They're very aggressive. And sometimes they'll sit by termite mounds and as the termites come out of the mound, they'll snap. Those are like a little treat. It's like you having some chocolate chips from the freezer. After you've done your good deed in the bathroom, Alphaeus, you get chocolate chips. Well, this is probably what it is for them. It's a little chocolate chip to nibble on in between those eating those dead animals. So I have two pictures here tonight. I want to share them. It's not a pretty animal by no means. All right, so here's the first one. Oh my goodness, not a pretty animal. Look at that. Ugh. And I have another one. He's walking around as if he's got a beautiful dress on or a nice jacket and he's flaunting it. Not a pretty bird, huh? So the next one, is the red-tailed hawk right here. I love hawks. So it says a fierce hunter. The red-tailed hawk watches for rabbits and lizards from a perch on a high branch or cactus. Remember we talked about cactuses? It also chases other birds in flight. So it's a great flyer. It eats lots of different animals. It'll look for chipmunks and squirrels, bats, and snakes. And I have two pictures. And then I'm going to tell you a funny story. You're going to laugh. You're going to say, Nanny Susanny. Okay, so there's one in a tree. Look how beautiful. And it's a big bird. It's a beautiful bird. Look at this. There it is in the sky. And I wanted to show you a picture of it, the sky, because I have a funny story to tell you. So many years ago, down in Florida, where Grampy and Nanny would go stay, I would wake up in the morning and I'd go for a long walk along the country road. And there's a lot of birds that fly up in the sky. And one morning I was walking along the road and there was this beautiful, it just had these big wings and it was flying in the sky and it was so pretty. And so, that I was standing there looking at it and this lady came over that lived in a house and went to get her mail out of the mailbox. She says, what are you looking at? And I said, look at that beautiful hawk up there flying in the sky. It's so graceful and beautiful. She goes, that's not a hawk. That's a vulture. <laughs> so here 
there's Nanny thinking it's a beautiful hawk and it's this ugly bird way up in the sky flying like that, probably looking at me and saying, if somebody can get her, then I'm gonna come get the leftovers. So I went, oh, and I just kept on walking. So that's my funny story, silly nanny. Okay, the next one is the long-haired caracal. Caracal, odd name. It moves fast to pounce on creatures such as lizards, mice, young antelopes. It also climbs trees or leaps into the air to catch birds. Wow. So it says, do you know how many babies it can have at the same time? Three. So it's like mummy having you, Winry, you, Alphaeus, and Monty all at the same time. Mummy would be like, oh, it's his big <laughs> tummy. So isn't it wonderful that mommy had you, Winry, once, and then a couple years later she had Monty, uh, Alphaeus, and then she had Monty. <laughs> So another thing is they're very good moms, just like your mom, very good moms. And they keep their babies in caves or burrows. Remember, we talked a lot about burrows or in a tree stump. So an old tree stump, they might live in there. And I have a few pictures because beautiful cat. And uh, it talked about it leaping in the air. So I have one of it in the air, but this is a close up. Look how pretty. Pretty. Look at the long ears and oh, it's a pretty cat. Look, there it is leaping in the air. Whoa. Okay, the next one is a small slender fox with large ears. The kit fox, like a kit cat. Well, this is a kit fox. Hunts at night. It searches for lizards, mice, and other small creatures. And I do have a picture. Here's one, the mom and the little baby. Isn't that pretty? Pretty picture. So it has large ears. It hears very well. The babies are called cubs or pups. And they live in dens or old trees. Then another one here is called... The dingo. The dingo is from down under. And that's in Australia. It says, whether hunting alone or in packs, dingoes often travel many miles across the desert in search of food. They are relatives of the domestic dogs first brought to Australia thousands of years ago. Hmm. And so they grow about, so this is a foot long. So about twice this is how tall they grow. And four times this is how long they can be. And their tail, I have a picture of one. And, oh, no, I don't have a picture. Oh, yeah, I showed it to you. There it is. See, their tail is bushy and it's this long. And they can live up to six years old. So just uh, when we are going to be six years old this year. So that's how long they live. So the last one is the meerkat. See that? So it says teamwork is the secret of the meerkat success. Some go hunting while others keep guard or care for the young. The meerkat is a type of mongoose and lives in family groups of 10 to 30 animals. Each meerkat in the group has its own duties, so their own chores, their own type of work that they need to do and that they're responsible for. And it says sentries watch for birds of prey, their main enemies, while other meerkats hunt for small creatures such as lizards, birds, and even snakes. So, I'm going to show you a picture. So, they aren't very long. You think they are, but here's a picture right here. It's cute. Look, there's a... Come on. Flip, 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 flip. 
Look at that. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of, the, oh, seven. One's hidden behind there, seven of them. And then here's like Winry, Alphaeus, and Monty. Isn't that cute? So they only grow about this tall. So this tall or this tall. It's not very tall, you know. And they dig burrows for protection in the sand. And it also keeps them cool in the desert. And you'll notice, see if I'm going to show you real close. See their eyes, their eyes are dark, very black around their eye. That's to keep the glare of the sun off. So when they're looking for predators and some animal that wants to attack them, well, that protects the glare from the sun. Isn't that wonderful? So, I have two videos of meerkats for you tonight. So there's a fun one about meerkats that you're gonna really enjoy. And then there's another one that's a really special treat for you about meerkats. And you're gonna, when you see it, you're gonna go, oh, I know who that is. So you enjoy those videos. All right, so that's our story tonight. And Nanny was so excited to tell you about all these animals. And so excited to show you my haircut. Look, I look like 10 years younger, but I'm retiring in less than three weeks. So I'm so excited about that. And I know you don't know what retiring means, but it's a big special event for Nanny. And she's really excited for this next chapter in her life. She's excited about someday getting out to see you whenever it's okay for me to travel in the airplane and to go see and stay with you at your house. But I'm so excited because I haven't seen you at Winry and Alphaeus since five months and I've never seen Monty in person. I've never held Monty. So Nanny is just so excited about doing that. So I hope you had a good day. And thank you, Winry, for your bedtime reading video. I'm so excited about it. You did such a great job. You're really good at it. You're good at reading. And you're good at doing a video and reading to Nanny. And you even told me about how your day was. And, and hoped I had a good day. So that is so sweet, honey. Nanny just loves you too. To the moon and back. And uh, Alphaeus. Nanny loves you too. Oh, that face of yours. And oh, I miss you, miss you, miss you so much. And a little Monty. Oh, the big cheeks. And he looks so happy. He looks so content. And soon he'll be talking to you and giggling with you and wanting to play with you and crawl on the floor with you. You wait. It won't be very long. He'll be doing all those things and you'll have so much fun with him. So tonight have sweet dreams and we pray that God places his appointed angels over you again tonight when it's bedtime. They go, oh, it's time for us to go and watch over Winry and Alphaeus and Monty so that they have a good night's sleep and they have sweet dreams. Have a great day tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday and enjoy your time. I hope you get to play with your friends and, uh, and you get to learn stuff, very important, and, and your Bible story in the morning and all these wonderful things that you get to do that are fascinating and fun. So until then, Nanny and Grampy and Uncle Michael and Nana Opam and Mir, we love you so much. And I've got a lot of kisses for you tonight. Here's your Nanny kisses. Mm -hmm. To Monty, to Alphaeus, to Winry. And I love you very much.